All praises. How are you brothers doing this Sabbath? Sisters, how are y'all doing? All praises. Deacon Abiel just told me that they're going crazy out in Oklahoma. Esau took over the Capitol. They're going crazy. So everybody just be on your P's and Q's. Just be aware. Esau wants their president <laughs> to stay in power. But no matter what, don't even think. It don't matter who the president is. No. A program, this is how they operate. There's a program that is set and written out. No matter who's president, that program must be followed. It got to be carried out. Don't matter who's in office. And Joe Biden, how old is he? 78? He's about to have a stroke, and you're going to have Kamala, Kamala uh, Harris as the uh, president. And uh, every black man better watch the hell out for her. And, she, and by the way, she's not Israel. That is Elam. She is Elam. That is not an Israelite. Y'all, I know the sisters was full. The black woman. She ain't the black woman. They make sure, like Obama. They they look they look for those quasi looking blacks. Semi. What's the word? Ambiguous. To confuse everybody, and they got another agenda. <laughs> exactly. Van Jones is always crying. Why is that nigga always crying? It's um. He cried all on the news. As big, he's what like a damn football player. As big as that dude is. This morning, it's easier to be a dad. This car, my it's sons easier, can walk down the street now. So oh, shut the hell up. Character matters. I don't know what's wrong with his brothers. I don't even think. Matters. What's a little feminine boy? Being a good uh, on CNN, the Caucasian oh, News yeah, Network. Yeah, yeah. Donald, I don't even think that dude cry like this guy. A lot of people. Something wrong if with Van. Muslim, Somebody send him some flowers. You, you, you don't have to worry him downstairs. Want you here. If you're an immigrant, you don't have to worry. <laughs> the president's going to be happy to have babies snatched away or send, send dreamers. The fact that he was crying because Biden made it into no office. And how many of y'all saw the uh, documentary 13th, the 13th Amendment? He himself was in that documentary. Speaking you know, about how the Thirteenth Amendment was the uh, was the conduit that landed the brothers of in jail by the thousands, and the, and the, and the, the rate just went up. You know they call him Jim Crow Joe. Yeah. So wow, Sleeping Joe and Jim Crow Joe. So I found it ironic. Off the because it's clear About that Joe Biden, not, not to get inside this political mess, because they all the devils that the Bible speaks of. We, we, this ain't about none of none of that. But uh, it was it was strikingly ironic that he was in that documentary speaking about how the crime bill basically is what landed brothers in jail, and Biden is the man that did it. They literally, literally. Have an opportunity. He said his name is all we over on all the crime them. bills. That's what he said. If we don't, sure, how evil this thing will. is. Remember <laughs> Kamala <laughs> Harris mm -hmm. when Oscar Grant got murdered? Because that's the proper word. Right. Murdered by murdered. the white cop. President, that's it. Everybody was pissed off. Kamala Harris refused to press charges on the white cop. The then when we tried, shoot. not just us, many people tried to post what happened on he Facebook. They blocked us and said that's um. Misinformation, misinformation, of the, right, all that stuff. I'm like, this is not misinformation. Yeah, d d just I have the actual court records. Wow. So I was like, what the hell do you mean misinformation? Damn. The, the media is the devil of yeah, Bible speaks. Yeah, they they something else. Oh, they something else. Something else. Oh yeah, they said the black woman uh put Biden up in there. What is it? Seventy five percent of black women. Eighty five percent of black women. They voted for Kamala Harris, not him. That's so what much. it was, and that, and and what's the name? He knew to use her and make and say that she was black. Mm -hmm. They actually had that out there, right? On they really, some records. They really push her. Rarely push her. Who, East what Indian she really side. is, right? They push the they black. Said, put her up as a black woman because she comes from the West Indies. Exactly. Right, and she's married so to. They Amalek. kept all that hidden. She ain't married to a brother. She married to Amalek. What's the sisters don't realize about that? Her agenda is Amalek's agenda. 100%. Whoever you lay with, that's whose program you with. I hope y'all understand. I couldn't understand Van Jones crying. I really couldn't do that because, why? like I said, he was in the 13th we shouldn't ask Amendment documentary speaking about how 
a quarter of all prisoners on this earth is in the American jail system, and he was a proponent of, of basically trying to free the people. In other words, to not have that amendment uh, channel so many people into slavery. And then here you crying because of the man that the man that set it all up got in the office. But to take them out of society. That was just I couldn't. That 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 irony was just beyond dimensions. I couldn't couldn't handle that one. That was that was beyond beyond everything. All right, Bishop, that's it. I lean back. Okay, well, today we're going to discuss white shepherds over black sheep. White shepherds over black sheep. And when I say black sheep, I'm talking about you Puerto Ricans too. I know a lot of you voted for uh uh a lot of them voted for Trump. And they throw he was throwing their behinds out the country left and right. But that's for another topic. I'll leave I'll leave y'all alone, Mita Mita. I'll leave y'all alone. <laughs> Jeremiah, who's reading for me? Officer Get Alive. Oh, welcome back, Officer Get Alive. Welcome so long, back. So long. You in the spirit today? Yes, sir. Because last week, I don't know who that brother was reading for me. He was jacking us up. Boy, the hell is this? We're gonna open Bishop, the that was Miami, Bishop. <laughs> that was Miami? My, oh, Miami. Wow, wow. Oh, he came with Captain Zakar? Yep. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. What? What? Verse 1. What chapter, Bishop? Jeremiah 23. Yes, sir. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. So this chapter goes against the pastors. Now, we know that the pastors that Jer during Jeremiah's time were Israelites, black men. And they still are today. However, the problem with the pastors of today, unlike back then during Jeremiah's times, today's black pastors follow the theology of white shepherds. They exit, you this damn word called exegesis? I guess, do the urban apologetic get on my damn nerves. They always look for these high, these high, uh, uh, convoluting words that nobody knows, only them in their little stupid circle. Do you know the exegesis of the interpretation of the script? Oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> the exegesis or interpret the scriptures to esteem and credit the same people. What they do is they, these, our black pastors that follow uh, white society, they go to their cemetery schools of learning. They um, credit the same people that enslaved and destroyed their own race. Real quick, give me a Leviticus 26, 17. We're going to come back to this. I just want to pull a point here. Leviticus 26, 17. We're coming back to Jeremiah. Yes, sir. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 17. Do you know the hermeneutics of what it's saying? Oh, shut the hell up. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Leviticus 26, verse 17. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be wait, slain. Wait, wait, wait. You did something. <laughs> my bad. Have mercy. Have mercy. <laughs> I can't drink no water. Not today. Not today. <laughs> you at the camp today? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Have mercy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So your <laughs> voice ain't gone, right? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I got you. I got you. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. So the Bible says, they that hate you shall reign over you. Go ahead. And ye shall flee when none pursue it. So what I want out of that is that they that hate you shall reign over you. Now give me Deuteronomy 28 real quick. They that hate you shall rule over you. This is what the black man and black woman needs to understand. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore shall you serve your enemies. The same man that reigns over you, that hates you, you shall have to serve him. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So we would have to serve our enemies for food. The imp the, our enemies will control the imports and exports of food. Go ahead. And in thirst. Our enemies will control the imports and exports of water. Go ahead. And in nakedness. Clothing. They will control the raw textiles. Go ahead. And in want of all things. That part right there. And in want of all things. We want anything. If we lack anything. Education or religion. Any type of understanding about God. We'd have to go to the same man that raped, robbed, and pillaged us. 
So if this man has not treated us right, what makes us think that he's going to teach us right? This is the man who destroyed us. Now he's teaching us how to get salvation. It makes no biblical sense. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Mm -hmm. Let's go on back to Jeremiah 23 and verse 1 again. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Now, what we just read in Jeremiah 23, I mean, Deuteronomy 28, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 28, 48, it says we're going to serve our enemies for want of all things. So if we wanted to learn about God, salvation, our enemies said, well, you have to go to our seminary schools, cemetery school, to learn about salvation. So these black men and black women go to these cemetery schools and learn. Now they come out of these cemetery schools as pastors, as ministers, as reverends and bishops. That's what they do. Now read it again. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 23 verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. And have not visited them. So when it says you have scattered my flock and driven them away, this is what they do. They go into the black and brown community. And let's say you'll have a Jehovah Witness. They will get a remnant of the flock and say, come be Jehovah Witness. Another group comes around Baptist and they'll go around, come to my church and hand out flyers. And they will go in there. And that now they are Baptists. Then you get the Pentecostals. Then you, they, you go to their church. What they're doing, like it says here, they have scattered and have driven our people away. Away from what? Away from the truth that they're the Israelites and keeping the commandments. That's what they've driven them away from. Go ahead. And have not visited them. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Come on. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. Whether I have driven them. Do you realize we're the only group who is concerned about our people that have been driven out from country to country? There's no church on earth concerned with the gathering of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. They, at, how many times have I been, grew up in church? I don't recall one minister that I've ever sat in church discussing the slave trade, whether sub-Saharan or transatlantic. Never. Do they discuss that thing? It's like taboo to ever talk about that thing. It's forbidden by God to for them to speak about this thing. So read that again, verse 3. Verse 3. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes. Mm -hmm. Their and foes they is their tribes. Judah's going to come back to Judah, Benjamin to Benjamin, Levi to Levi, Ephraim to Ephraim, so forth and so on. Go ahead. And they, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And as a people, we're going to become fruitful and increase. Watch this. Come on. Verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Now that verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. Now you got the colon there. Give me that. Give me that in Jeremiah 3.15, please. Yes, sir. Jeremiah. Chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. So the Lord prophesied that he will give pastors that's according to his mind. His heart means his mind. Go ahead. Which shall feed you with knowledge. Which and shall feed you with knowledge. And understanding. And understanding. Now, give me the precept for knowledge in Malachi. Knowledge. What is should the pastors be feed? What is the knowledge these pastors should be feeding us with? Watch this. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. That's what it's talking about. The priest's lips should keep, read it again. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. And they should keep the law, seek the law at his mouth. That's supposed to be coming out of the pastor's lips. The law. The law of the most high God. Going back to Jeremiah. 23? 23. Mm -hmm. So, again, so how can an enemy that has hated us for centuries teach us about the gospel, the glorious good news of Christ, the good news of healing the brokenhearted? Hmm? How are they going to teach us about that? How can they teach the gospel about the deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to our blind people? How can they teach the gospel, which is about setting at liberty 
those that are bruised and beaten. That's all that dis discusses our people. When you think about the gospel uh, to the brokenhearted, being given to the captives, to the blind, and to the bruised, I want everyone to always think about people like Emmett Till, Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Tamir Rice. Think about what they went through, what their parents and their relatives and the men and women around them went through. The anguish, the pain that was on from that time even on up to today. They need the gospel. They need good news. Why? Because they are the brokenhearted. Okay? They are the spiritually blind. They are the, uh, the captives. They are the bruised. Okay? Cause uh, give me that in Luke 4. Give me that. Just give me that so y'all know what I'm referencing. Luke 4. Verse About eight. the gospel. We touched on it last week. Yes, sir. The book of Luke. Chapter 4 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Meaning the poor in spirit. Go ahead. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Why are they brokenhearted? Because our sons and daughters keep getting murdered and killed in the streets because of poverty and lack of education. Go ahead. To preach deliverance to the captives. We're the, if you didn't know that we're captive here in America, we're the, the word captive means slave. The word captivity means slavery. Captive means slave. That's us. But the churches will ag ignore the obvious meanings of these words and say it's everybody on a damn planet. It ain't everybody on a damn planet. Go ahead. And recovering of sight to the blind. We're the blind. What makes us blind? We are spiritually blind to what the Bible is saying, to God's message to us. That's what makes us blind. Go ahead. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty, meaning to set us free. Like I said in Amistad, set us free. We who aren't free. That's what it's talking about. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Why are we bru Ask George Floyd about being bruised. Ask Emmett Taylor about being bruised. Ask um, Brianna Taylor about being bruised. Okay? That's what it's talking about. You talking about it's everybody. The hell is wrong with you? <laughs> From there, give me a... The, as a matter of fact, g hey, Alicia, I ain't leaving you alone today. Give me a, the white woman. Paula White. She got the name Paula White. You know, that's Trump's spiritual advisor. Wow. I want y'all to see something. Because I made a statement earlier. I said that these black pastors, or they, they might be black on the outside, but they're very white on the inside. Right. Oh, I should use the word red. Very red on the inside because they follow Esau's doctrines. Okay? Let's read this. Put it on the screen. Get a lie. Let's read this. Yes, sir. Who is Paula White? Meet the new high priestess in the cult of Trump. <laughs> two, two days after the election, the country is still waiting to find out who the next president will be. And as anxiety grows, people are employing different methods to deal with it. Biden is telling his supporters to be patient and wait for all the votes to be counted, while Trump is demanding that the votes stop being counted in cities that are likely to vote against him. Others... Like <laughs> others, like White House spiritual advisor Paula White, are simply praying for Trump's victory. On Wednesday, a video of White made the rounds where she was preaching in rushed and nonsensical tones that bordered, that bordered on demonic tongue. <clears throat> we break and divide every demonic confederacy against the, against the election, against America, against that who you have declared to be in the White House. White said, chanting so quickly that each word, each word blended into the next. We break it up in the name of Jesus. We, lo we lose confusion into, de into demonic confederacy directed right now at this election, directed uh, specifically at the six states. And of course, the age-old prayer, we come against people that are working at high levels right now with demonic confederacies and secrecies and demonic plans and networks. We break it up and we command that it be exposed right in the name of Jesus. White, White later went on to claim that angels have been dispatched from Africa. <laughs> and they, Why couldn't she declare angels from Russia or Scandinavia or Poland or Czechoslovakia? She got to get the one or two angels left over there. Damn. <laughs> White later went on to claim that angels have been dispatched from Africa. And that she hears the sound of victory. Sounds a bit cult-like. No. 
Um, while many people may not have heard of White before this video, she has been around Trump for decades and is a well-known televangelist. And although White doesn't have an official title within the administration, the Washington Post reported in 2017 that she serves as a spiritual advisor and a pastor to the president, as well as heading as a heading a group of about 35 evangelical pastors who formed a uh, pseudo council for Trump of her relationship with Trump. She told the Post at the time, I don't preach to anyone, including the president on behavior modification. Everyone needs a safe place in life, and pastors can be people's safe place. That's why I have this relationship, because I don't talk about it. Now, here comes the point we really want right here. But as many pundits were quick to point out, White built her empire preaching in predominantly uh, black churches and to predominantly black audiences. At one point, she was the highest rated preacher on black entertainment television where she signed a $1.5 million deal in 2001. In 2007, Senator Chuck Grazley began an investigation into White and her, and her then husband, whose church was bringing in $40 million per year for misuse of donations. In 2010, the investigation was closed. That makes perfect sense with the title of the class. I see that crystal clear. White shepherds over black sheep. Damn. Go ahead. As the video of White's bizarre prayer began to circulate online, she was quickly accused of appropriating uh, the style and tenor of black faith leaders, and not for the first time either. Paula White is one of countless examples of white preachers cosplaying the uh, black cadences while ignoring black issues. You can't just want our rhythm without wanting our blues. This is how you exploit your neighbor, not how you love them. Wrote, on, wrote one Twitter user. Her support for Trump has strained her relationship with her, with her, the black community in some ways before, but perhaps more than ever now. White's congregation has reportedly lost several hundred members and Good. over, and over 10,000 per week in donations since she began working in the Trump White House. But she has continued to preach in majority black churches, something that many people see as predatory and actively harmful to her congregants. Man, I remember Paula White coming to my very diverse evangelical church in South Dallas back in the day. The black woman in my family were huge supporters. And now, wrote now wrote the Washington Post, Post Karen uh, Attire on Twitter. Okay, that was it. So that's what I wanted. These, she's not the only one that is set over these black sheep, these black congregations, and the people feel so comforted when they see a white face. Right. Even if you got a black minister teaching, he don't feel comfortable unless there's a white face in the audience. Yeah. Then he feels like he made it. That's how our people do. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, 29 real quick. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noon days as the blind gropeth in dark. This is explaining um, us being... Blind. Well, it said the gospel is about recovering of sight to the blind. This is why. Read verse 29 again. Yes, sir. And thou shalt grope at noondays as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Why is it calling us saying that we're like the blind that gropes in darkness at noonday? We're like the blind that gropes at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Because the word of God comes out, and our people cannot see the message the Lord has for his people. It's like they're blind. They got two eyes, but their spiritual eyes are closed. Read. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. And it says we shall only be oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save us. Give me Numbers 10, verse 9. Numbers chapter 10, verse 9. Let me show you something just real quick. Yes, sir. Numbers chapter 10, verse 9. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. The only one that can save us from our enemies is the Lord our God. I want everybody to understand that. There's never going to be no black man or black woman to save our people. And our people can't understand that. Maybe Kamala Harris is going to save us. Remember they said about Barack Obama? He's our Moses. No, Negroes. No, 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 no. Not at all. People cried during his, 
his election too. Mm -hmm. And it didn't change a damn thing. Exactly. Eight years passed by, and now you're crying for, for this dude now. Exactly. Madness. Give me that Psalm 72, verse 4, please. Psalm 72 and verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 72 and verse 4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Mm, go ahead. Read it again. Read it again. Yes, sir. Psalm 72, verse 4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy. And in case y'all didn't know it, we are the children of the needy. Go ahead. We're the needy people. Always needing assistance as a whole. I'm talking about as a whole, as a nation. Go ahead. I ain't talking about you one or two individuals that's good because you feel like you made it. Well, you can't, you're, you cannot rise above the status of your people. Go ahead. And shall break in pieces the oppressor. God's going to break in pieces the oppressor. That's what the Lord said he's going to do. Go back to Jeremiah 23, please. Yes, sir. Verse 4 again. No, I want verse 14. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 23, verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit now, a Now, watch this. He said, I've seen a horrible thing among the prophets of Jerusalem. The word prophets is the same word as preacher. Those, are the, those words are synonyms. Read, read it again. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 23, verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Now, verse 14 is very heavy. It's very specific and poignant. Read it again slow for me. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 23 and verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. So what is the horrible thing, Lord? Go ahead. They commit adultery. So these prophets, these preachers commit adultery. Uh, Elisha, Elisha, pull me up uh, uh, John Gray. That's the brother that's with um, uh, Joel Osteen. High paid Negro working with Joel Osteen. Is that it? Do you see it in there? All right, give me the, the other one, Jamal in. So it's redirecting you someplace else. All right, put that on the screen. Let's read that. Pastor Jamal Bryant shares how temptation destroyed his marriage and nearly destroyed his ministry. Mm -hmm. Go down. Nope, let's just read it. All right. Uh, Pastor, Jamal's, J Pastor Jamal Bryant's fall from grace began with an extramarital affair that tore up his congregation and destroyed his marriage. TV One's Roland Martin went to his mega church, the Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, Maryland, to talk about the, the affair that ended his marriage, disrupted his congregation, almost destroyed his ministry, but changed him as a man and as a preacher. And you know after that, he done did it again. Right. He done did it again and to get to something wrong, but people still flock to this dude. That's how you know it's satanic. Go back to Jeremiah. You can take this off the screen. Yes, sir. Read that again. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. And walk in lies. Give me the one. Give me. Uh, it might be a video. Let's show. It says pastor and wife fall. Pastor and wife fall. Uh, how long is it? I think all I want is the first. You could go past the warning there. This is from a guy called Dawson Speaks. So it ain't me. And nobody said, oh, yes, he did, he did, he did. Yeah, start right there. Put it on the screen. Now let's get into this topic. All right, y'all. Now this is a story that keeps on giving. Now you know I've been following this case since it came out in 2017 of the three preachers. Well, let me get their titles right. Uh, one of them is a pastor, Pastor Anthony Haynes, and there he is with his wife who got her sentencing this week. Pastor Anthony Haynes was sentenced to life in prison uh, for sex trafficking and the other bishop, Bishop Cordell Jenkins, there he is right there with his wife, uh, Laura Lloyd Jenkins, but she got divorced during this whole thing. So she's just Laura Lloyd now. Uh, Cordell Jenkins is sentenced to life in prison and Laura Lloyd is sentenced to a year and a half in prison. And then you got the prophet, prophet Kenneth Butler. My God, prophet. I don't know how you didn't see none of this coming. Prophet <laughs> Butler said, I'm not going to lie to the FBI. Yeah, we did do it. I did it too. 
and he turned state on the other ones and he got 17 and a half years uh, for having uh, sex with the minor as well and he was just up open in front about everything that he did and he basically turned the other ones in too and say let's not waste the state's money let's just tell the truth but they wanted to play games with the state so that's why those two the pastor and the bishop have life in prison so now it's the y'all time do know that you, cause you know that hold on they might not have nothing on you right and you want to go to trial yeah. you know they don't really show you their hand the you know get the prosecutor said you sure you don't want to take the deal no we don't we want to go to trial right, right, right. now he didn't he or she didn't show you everything the right. evidence they got when you get to trial then it all yeah. come out and it come, and if you lose the trial You're doing all that whatever yeah. You going to get three yeah. times yeah. what was initially offered you the first time. The plea. No, deal no deal now, Negro. No plea now. So no people now. be playing. Y'all better pray the Lord be on your side. Go ahead. Sir Anthony Haynes, his wife, first lady, first lady, my God, these first ladies for my man, they doing anything for their man. First lady, Elisa Haynes and her daughter, remember she had a daughter, Alexis Fortune, were sentenced to prison this week. Now let me get into this. Elisa Haynes, 45 years old, and her daughter, Alexis Fortune, of 26 years old, of Toledo, Ohio, were sentenced Tuesday after pleading guilty to one count each of witness tampering. Now, Elisa, first lady, Elisa Haynes, was sentenced to two years in prison, and her daughter, Alexis Fortune, was sentenced to four years in prison. Now, now, Elisa, you all know she is the wife of Pastor Anthony Haynes. Now, this is what got them arrested. According to the plea agreement filed in this case, while Pastor Anthony Haynes was under federal indictment for sex trafficking of children and child sex pornography. Sex trafficking both of children and child pornography. Okay, go ahead. In the, in the church. visited the victim in the case at her apartment in order to force her. They forced her to recant statements she made to law enforcement. The defendants coerced the victim into leaving two voicemails on First Lady Elisa Haynes' cell phone stating that she was never trafficked or victimized by Pastor Anthony Haynes. <laughs> really? I mean, she did all of that. And now she's serving, her and her daughter are serving time in prison when they have, the FBI have the evidence of all the pastors going into hotel rooms with these girls, going into the church. They have stuff that they have on cell phones and laptops. And you risk your freedom in order to save your man, Pastor Anthony Haynes, by going to the victim while the pastor was on trial? That was just stupid. Now, the first lady and her daughter intended to share these voicemails with the attorney for Pastor Anthony Haynes to be used in his upcoming trial, but it backfired. They ended up getting arrested because the victim, she got away from them when they took her out of her apartment and she went and contacted the police and then the FBI opened up an investigation on the first lady, Miss Elisa and her daughter, Alexis. This has to be on an episode of TV ones for my man. Cause this is like the silliest thing that anyone could do. Now I'm going to let okay. you all watch these videos. All right. You could cut that right there. Well, all righty then. Where's the BBC? Where's the BBC? Where's BBC ain't there? Where's the, where's the weasel eels right. of the country? Right. Where all that at? Where's all that out? Right. Yeah. They even name is changed. They didn't name the church, the denomination, none of that. Let's go on back to Jeremiah 23, 14 again. Read that again. Yes, sir. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. Uh, Alicia, can you give me Mark Little, Cures Board. Mark Little. Yes, that's it. Let's, let's blow it up. That's it. Go ahead and play that. Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes. we thank you, yes. oh God, for this group holding up the arms. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Of this president, oh God. Yes, Lord. This president who cares, oh God, not just for black folks. Yes, Lord. But for every American, oh God. We pray his health. Yes. We pray his strength, oh yes. God. We thank you, oh God, by the power of your Holy Spirit yes. that you're protecting him. Yes. You're protecting his family. Oh, it is Paula Wright. And you're filling right there him behind him. the president. Yeah. And with we the thank you for what you have oh, done only eat right and there what you have yet to do. Yes. All the rest of the Negroes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Get your hand off me, nigga. That's what Trump did. Get your hand off me, nigga. 
Get your nigga nigga hands off me. Four years ago, what the hell do we have to lose? But if we don't vote right this time, we're going to have a hell of a whole lot to lose. Okay, that's all I I want. Hey, can you read that again? One, two, one. All right. Jeremiah, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what's so crazy? You know what's so crazy about what you just watched? Listen, we lost a damn God given mind. Let me tell you something. I mean, I hate to go back. Do you know that Donald Trump, that, first of all, Donald Trump is the most racist president the United States ever had. And do you know Donald Trump got 5 million more votes than 2016? You know what that's saying? The white man, the white woman sent a message to your Negroes. I'm, hey, he represent me. That's what they're saying. Our people is crazy as hell. You would have think that he would have less. No, he had. Now more people say, "Yo, listen, I believe in him now." That's what they're saying. After four years of what he did, oh, now I believe in him. Hey, uh, this right here, just wow. This is this is heavy. Bishop, can I get one scripture? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody, please give me uh, <laughs> Isaiah one and nine. What our people don't realize, I had to like look into my eyelids before I could, because it's like, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Read that thing. Our, our people are something, man. Yes, sir. They're something else. Here I, they out there praying for Trump or Biden. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Read the thing. Isaiah chapter one, verse nine. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Except the Lord of hosts has left, have left us, the nation of Israel, a what? A very small remnant. The sm- very small remnant are the righteous men of God teaching the Bible, the Israelites. That's the small remnant. And the, and the small remnant is trying to tell our people with the Bible to gather themselves together. Okay? That's what the scriptures say, O nation not desired, before the decree break forth. That's a warning that's coming from this small remnant. Read that thing again. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Go ahead. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. That's the movement that's coming down the channel. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the reason why everything else is going sideways. Okay. Trump can't stop it. The black people up there they can't stop that wave that's coming out the only thing that's going to stop it is the most highest word coming through the prophets that's what got to come down but our people are so lost they don't even see where to get the information from they up there crying on trump's shoulders crying on biden's shoulders negro crying on tv talking about some we can walk down the street now after eight years of obama why you couldn't walk down the street after that after you done cried, this is just, I, I had to turn my head. It was, it was just so sickening to see what I was seeing. It's just phenomenal. It's like a bad dream. Unreal, the stupidity. It's at a whole nother level. <laughs> Read it one more time. I'm going to give it back to Bishop. Yes, sir. Please. Oh, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. That's the agenda that's coming down the point. That's the, the Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what's coming down. That's the that's the forces that's coming through the whole the whole country. Starting with this, starting here. Okay, so our people are mad. Uh, the, the, this this title is is perfect. White shepherds over black sheep. This is sheeple <laughs> over black sheeple. The Israelites. All right, that's it. That's right. Uh, let's go. On, let's go back to Jeremiah twenty-three, and let's jump down to verse sixteen. Yes, sir. Jeremiah chapter twenty-three, verse sixteen. Thus saith the Lord of hosts: Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you; they make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. So that bottom part is what I really want to focus on. They speak a vision of their own heart. And not out of the mouth of the Lord. The mouth of the Lord is the Bible. You notice what these dudes do? Men and women. Because you got women pastors up in there too. They'll find one verse. And the whole two hour sermon is on this one verse. And by the end of the verse. By the end of the sermon. 
It's all a motivational speech. So, so that you go home feeling good and warm and fuzzy, and you want to give them money. Exactly your pockets are lighter. That's that's all it is, and and they, they that's what it means. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. That's what they do. Read on, verse seventeen. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord have said, ye shall have peace. When it says they say still unto them that despise me, that's our people. Yeah, right. Our people despise the Lord. Okay, real quick, give me that. In, uh, uh, I believe it's Hose it might be Hosea 12, where it talks about the great hatred. You know what I'm talking about, Gedaliah? I think so, yes, It just sir. popped in my mind. It says something about great hatred that our people got for the Lord. And what it really means is like Isaiah 30 and 20 says, about we, we, we don't want to hear the law of God. Hosea 9 and 7. Hosea 9 and 7. Hosea chapter 9 verse 7. The days of visitation are come. Mm -hmm. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. See that? The prophet is a fool. That's the prophet of the day. The preachers of today. Go ahead. The spiritual man is mad. The spiritual man and woman is crazy. When it says mad, it means insane in the membrane. Go ahead. For the multitude of thine iniquity. For the multitude of sins. Go ahead. And the great hatred. That's it right there. Our people have a great hatred against the Lord of heaven and earth. And when it could our people never admit that. No. They'll say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love Jesus. But then you show them a law and they'll go, no, no, not, no, not my God. Not my God. Give me the precept of Isaiah 30. This is what they do. They don't want to hear no laws from the Lord. Ask Creflo. He'll tell you. We don't want to hear no daggone law. To hell with the law. Start at verse 9, Bishop. Uh, 12. Okay, Isaiah 30 and verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word. See that? You despise this. You hate. The word despise mean hate. You hate this word. You hate the laws of God. Go ahead. And trust in oppression. And our people trust in oppression. And did did uh, his mama and is daddy. it me or is it? Then Biden was Obama vice president? Yes. 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The president minute. couldn't do it. But the I'm vice confused. But the vice president can't. I'm confused. Obama did eight years with Biden yes. because he was the second man. So if Biden was going to do something under, uh, with Obama, then he was supposed to do it. Now all of a sudden now he's going to do something he didn't do with Obama. We're crazy. We are crazy, D. We are insane. I, say, I can't see with this kind of stupidity on the earth, I can't see human life going too much further. <laughs> This is dangerous. This is dangerous to be this stupid. You know what they say? They say because people people are saying that old fool. It takes wisdom to get to be old. You talking about that old fool that he done made it up into those ages? Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta have some smarts. Yeah. If you ain't got a certain amount of smarts, you'll be dead tomorrow. Well, this kind of stuff can't last long. That kind of that level of stupidity. Can't make it long. You're going you're gonna to do something that's going to end your life. It's just, you can't live long with that kind of brain. You just can't. It just cannot. And for a whole generation of people to be like that, we at the end, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, we are at the end. There ain't much left. How can, you, can't, you can't get much worse than this. What's worse than this? Just try to work your brain and try to figure out what's worse than that. That's Negro to the tenth power. That's everything there. There's nothing left. That's give me that Amos. You know what I want. This is why the Lord said about these damn songs, these damn Christian songs. What God says about it. Amos chapter five and verse twenty-three. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. I don't care how good you can riff, young man. God said He don't want to hear that garbage. Come on. For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. God said, I will not hear the melody of thy vials. I don't want to hear that stuff away. And people listen, oh, that's so beautiful. It's not, it's noise to God Almighty. Noise. What are you going to say, Cap? You was going to say something. Um, so he's singing that he's finally formed. This is a whole but, other level. But, but here's the thing. 
Are the kids in cages they, down at the border? We did not they built the cages. Didn't they Joe Biden help build those cages, build build cages, cages. Build those cages that they're in? Built the cages. Yeah. So, oh, oh, so the Negro about. forgot about those kids they in cages. cages. They don't matter they right they now. Say, because they're still the in cages and then they had in New Mexico, in, in Texas, in California, right now. And they ain't singing I'm free. So what the hell is the Negro talking about? I think I was trying to find the right words to describe what I just saw That was him. That is known... Bear with me now, and it's scriptural. That is known as divine stupidity. Yeah. You can't get that crazy on your own. Yeah. It takes a power to get right. Like stupid it parents. A, right. <laughs> yeah. It takes a power, Bishop. Oh, God made us. God, it, Deuteron, we read it. The Lord shall smite him with madness because you can't get that crazy on your own. There's not enough human strength and stupidity to get that to that level. God has to forward it. <laughs> can you, you just, what I'm saying? If he's that stupid, can you imagine his parents? That's what I'm talking about. Damn. That's a whole nother. That's beyond the dimensions of stupidity. That's my point. Stupidity has parameters. Yeah. Well, his, his boundaries. Yeah. He went beyond that. Beyond that. Damn. <laughs> the hell is this? Uh, we, we at get a lie. We in Jeremiah we, 23. We didn't finish uh, Isaiah 30 and 12. Did you want to finish it, Bishop? Despise this uh, word. Okay, let me hear it. Yes, I, sir. I don't remember. Isaiah 30, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression. Oh, that's why we went to the video. Trust in oppression. That's why we trust in democracy. We trust in Christianity, which is two sides of the same coin. Christianity and democracy is two sides of the same coin. Go ahead. And perverseness. And perverseness. Go ahead. Was that it? And stay there on. And we stay in that thing. We're going to say y'all what's up. Your head hurt. Who got an aspirin for Deacon? <laughs> He's in a room. <laughs> by himself. Before the election went, he was in chains. He was in captivity. The vote said boom. All of a sudden, he's free. Yeah. What the hell changed in this room? <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a whole nother level here. This is some scary stuff, man. <laughs> You ain't seen you ain't seen a key to unlock your behind come from nowhere. And you sing and you free. That's another level. We ain't got much left. Can't be. Can't be. Can't be Lord have mercy left. on us. Where we at? Jeremiah 23, verse 17. Okay, go ahead. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord have said, ye shall have peace. This is what these fake ministers say. They say that the Lord said, ye shall have peace. Go ahead. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. This is what these fake pastors do. They tell you that there's going to be peace. They tell you that it's okay to walk after the imagination of your own heart, that no evil is going to come. Hold that, hold that, hold that. Give me the one in Jeremiah 28, 8, where Jeremiah got on the prophet Hananiah for teaching peace and safety. Yeah. Yes, sir. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesied the peace when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord have truly sent him. Jump down to 15. Verse 15. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet. Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord have not sent thee. But thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So I want you to especially see it ain't so much the brothers that's into that feel good motivational speech teaching. It's always this side of the room. He makes me feel so good. That's why these churches are filled up with them. Because they want to tell you, woman, thou art loosed. And the Israelites, verse 8, one, once again, verse this is what the Israelites are saying. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. That's how you know the prophets of the Lord. They're going to come teaching you that evil is coming. Pestilence is coming. War is coming. That's what the Bible says the prophets of God would teach. But the women don't look for that. They, they look for that feel-good religion pastor. The Jamal 
What's that Negro's name we just looked at? Jamal Bryant said, uh, what's the chubby guy that cheated on his wife twice? What's John Gray? They look for them dudes. And the crying Joel Osteen's and the Paula Whites that says there's going to be peace and safety and love for all mankind. And then you end up dead and want to know why God killed you. This is, you're reading it here in Jeremiah 28. Because when Christ came on the scene, watch. Give me that Matthew 24. You know the verse I want. Christ taught the same thing Jeremiah teached. Yes, Why? Because Christ taught Jeremiah. Matthew 24. You know what I want? Yes, sir. Jeremiah, I mean, excuse me, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Read. For nations shall rise against nation mm. and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. See that? So Christ... Did not change nothing Jeremiah said. Christ didn't come teach and feel good. See, that tells me most of our sisters did not follow Christ. Because Christ talked of war, pestilence, evil to come. So you, the women, although there was a, a, an elect remnant that followed him, but that shows me the mass majority that filled the churches, those were not followers of Christ. Who's that? Malachi, that's your phone? So they, they didn't follow Christ. That's my point. They didn't follow Christ. Just like today. Don't look for huge amounts of women to follow this truth. They're going to be against the gospel. They don't want to hear nothing the gospel has to say about uh, good news for us, but bad news right. for our enemies. No, they, don't want they don't want that. Go back to Jeremiah 23. Uh, reverse 17 again. Uh, you know what? I got a, a, a letter from a sister this week. Hmm. It came in yesterday. She... Ugh, I don't know what's wrong with some of these sisters. Some of them are here, but they're not here. You hear what I said? Some of them are here, but they're not here. She sent me pamphlets from the Christian church. Four pamphlets. And she says, she writes, she opens a letter. Shalom, most high in Christ, bless Bishop. Good to hear from you. I hope your health is well. Blah, blah, blah. You're the same old thing. But at the bottom, she said, I'd like you to take the time and read these pamphlets. Oh, I want to wait till I shout out to him and curse her out. <laughs> I'm going to cuss her out. And she's sitting in the congregation. That shows me some of them are here, but they're not here with us. They just want one of y'all. And when they get one of y'all, they're going to destroy your life. I'm telling y'all now. They're going to make you sing like that. <laughs> like, like what we just saw in that screen. And if you got kids, they're going to have your kids wearing Spider-Man costumes. Prophet today, Spidey tomorrow. The hell is this? Can't make this stuff. Where we at, Jeremiah? Where we at? Uh, you want to read verse 17 again? No, no, Jeremiah. Let's go on back. To verse 18. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 23 and verse 18. For, for who have stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard his word? Who have, mark, who have marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury. See that? Destruction's coming. Go ahead. Even a grievous whirlwind, mm -hmm. it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. We cannot save the wicked of our people. We can't save them. I would hope we could save our brothers like T.D. Jakes or Kraft, but I, I, I don't see it. They're not, they're not, nope, I'm not changing. Money too good. Money too good. Okay, go ahead. The anger of the Lord shall re not return until he hath executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days... When? In the latter days. When? In the latter days. Can somebody tell the Christian that the fear of the Lord is here? Because these are the latter days. So I don't know what the Christians are talking about. It says the reader, read again, read verse 20. Yes, sir. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfect. And we're hoping you can consider this. Is nothing coming to America but evil, war, destruction? pestilence disease that's all that's the message that the bible has and the lord wants us to repent so we can be delivered from here if you got any other message it's not of the lord you coming with this old woman thou art loose feel good just love love mm, you're going you're going to perish horribly real quick give me a uh jeremiah we read jeremiah 28 8, right yes sir give me second corinthians 11 These pastors, these daggone pastors. White shepherds over black sheep makes no damn sense. Come on. What verse you want, Bishop? Verse 1. Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 
Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. So Paul is writing to the Corinthians and yes, the Corinthians were Israelites. They were not heathens. They were not people of Greek ancestry. These were Greek speaking Jews. Give me that in first Corinthians 10, one to three, please. So we can prove that. Cause I know right now a Christian's going, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. That ain't what the urban apologetics, to hell with the urban apologetics. Right. You can't exit Jesus a damn thing. <laughs> I read that. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud. All our fathers. All our fathers passed through the sea and were baptized unto Moses. So the Corinthians... If these were Greeks, real Greeks, they would have said, uh, uh, excuse me, Paul, our fathers were not with you during the time of Egypt. Our fathers was not with your father. What are you talking about? Paul, that's letting you know that these Corinthians were Israelites. Everybody see that, right? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. So Paul says, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you, you Israelites, as a chaste virgin to Christ. Because there's going to be a wedding where the nation of Israel, the elect.